out of the hurricane season. Wherever you are in Grenada, Caracou, and Pity Martinique, it's our pleasure to welcome you again and to wish you well on this day, the start of a brand new month. We have just concluded May, five months of 2011 already gone by, and expect the remaining seven months to move at express speed. And uh, we certainly going to be challenged during the next six months. June to November, that's when the hurricane season is in the Caribbean and other parts of the, the other parts of North America. We certainly are going to be challenged and we want to encourage those of you who have not yet done the things that you ought to be doing. Um, NAGMA, they have been providing adequate advice to us and we want to encourage you to heed to the advice and let's all try to mitigate whatever challenges we may have during the hurricane season. Well, we're going to provide you with much tips throughout the six-month period. A um, number of infomercials have been given to us, and we certainly hope that you pay attention to it. Right, so this morning we're going to be talking to a wide range of guests this morning, and um, we're going to start with our usual team, Wednesday morning team, and hope to be talking to Joseph Retzperer uh, from St. Lucia this morning. And uh, he has launched his book. He's going to be in Grenada to do some... Some uh, going to host a panel discussion actually in West Indies cricket. We'll tell you a little more about it, as well as to officially launch his book in Grenada, Living My Dream. In terms of the world of sport, well, 173 countries opposed Scotland and English FA associations. They wanted FIFA's election to be postponed. Well, as I said yesterday, I can't see that happening simply because, well, the Europeans have their way and. Third world countries, they realize that under Seb Blatter and um, who is the other one? And Joe Havelage, they have achieved a lot. And clearly, while there's corruption and they want to see corruption, you know, the people who are engaged in it be punished. The fact is, the first world countries will never be allowed to control this thing as they did in the past. Same thing as you hear in the IMF, it's the United States, World Bank, and the IMF Europe. Well, they want to change, well, that's what's going to you're not going to see it happening in football again. Any case, we heard from Paul last night, and you'll tell me, I'll try to get in Paul and talk to Paul this morning, that he received $20,000, Grenada got 40000 so that's clear. All the Caribbean territories got $40,000. And now here in, in Trinidad, the minister has called for investigation of whether the money came through the port. As you know, if you go through the port, you must declare the amount of money you're going with. If it's over a certain... Um, whatever the number is, I can't remember, maybe 5,000, I think, are there about. You have to declare it. But apparently, things occurred and things occurred. So there's call for an investigation in Trinidad. And we need to hear something from the GFA in Grenada, at least. Um, there's a call for return the money. Heaven knows if anybody, well, some people have spent the money already. <laughs> Any case, we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. And we want to remind you, too, that. Um, um, the dance festival. Uh, we're going to have some Venezuelans here this morning. I can't speak Spanish, but hopefully one of my colleagues will help me. They're going to be here this morning to talk about their participation in Grenada's dance festival, which starts today and continues until Saturday. Gentlemen, good morning. Nice to see Jimmy. Nice to see Pastor. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you back. Good to be with you again, gentlemen. Yeah. Right, yeah. and um, Pastor with his I'm lovely seeing. shirt. Thank you. Very, very Chinese. Very Chinese. Very Chinese. Yeah. My wife brought that for me. Yeah. You're so such a wonderful person. Yeah, you know, right. it's, it's very, it's very, I like it. You like it? I yeah. like it too. It fits uh, it's, you well. It's the only Chinese shirt I have. Okay, and it fits you well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good. But, uh, but it's good to have you back, Ray. We missed you. You've been away for, for what? <laughs> three weeks or four three weeks? weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. Right. It's, it's, it seems like eternity since yeah. you were always so long. <laughs> Jimmy Pastor, Pastor is, is doing me some. I, you know, I don't know where you're leading with that one. <laughs> well, I suppose I saw Pastor yesterday or Monday. Pastor told me he was sealing. Pastor, yes. you can swim? Yes, I can swim very well. As a matter of fact, Jimmy is a sailor, but I went to two of my, the members of my church we went out sailing on, on, on a sailing boat. It's quite nice. Okay. We've done it for quite a while. And we went for long. We swim for about an hour and a half. Just went swimming. Okay. When I finished, jeez, on my arms, I was, I was beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. It seems to be doing you well. There is no yeah. bulk in the tummy. It looks uh, all leveled up. No? You look very athletic. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose... Jimmy, you still say, or you don't get the time to do that? Yeah, for, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Starting back a little bit more. I'd like to go to Pity Martinique, they have a regatta. Okay. At, with weekend. This month? Yes. 
So I would hope I can get the opportunity yeah. to visit them and support them and take part and have That's some nice. fun with them. That'd be nice. Yeah. So you got put a boat. I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. If that's possible. Great, you'll find it. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you will be pa participating next year. He'll be judging. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, and let um, me before we ask you to read the first part. I know you're a big fan of of um, the Grand Prix, and it seems like um, Red Bull is having the Formula One Grand Prix, and mm. it seems like Red Bull is having its way. Yes, yeah, it seems uh, so. Sebastian Vettel has a 58-point lead over Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Um, you can see, give us a sense of what is, what, I, I, I really can't understand it actually in terms of the advantage because at times they all close and then all of a sudden within a year, I suppose technology, Red Bull seems to be on the Well, they've been dominating for a while because they've got the best design. But the problem is, and the thing is, um, Ferrari and McLaren have caught up. And I think another, you know, they should have done better in Monaco. Problem with Monaco, there were so many crashes that upset the whole rhythm of the of the race, and because it's not an overtaking circuit, it, it messed things up a bit. Hamilton had a terrible qualifying because he his team made a, an error in not sending him out on time. Um, he was the fastest man going into the finals, and he should really have been up there and winning that race. And um, because of the crashes, it helped Vettel. It helped everybody else. Um, and it didn't help Button, who was leading at one point and looking as he was going to win. So I think they've improved. But the 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 sad thing would be is that if if the other teams, especially Ferrari, McLaren, who are the real challengers, don't do something soon, it'll become a procession and it'll get very boring. So it's not good for the sport if if there's that sort of dominance, you know, for the I rest suppose of the technology. Season. They all studying in the lab how to sure, each other. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, but it's not. I don't think it's good. Uh -huh. You know, when Schumacher was winning every race those years gone by, mm -hmm. it got boring. Formula One became a very unpopular sport because it was no longer a sport. It was a a procession <laughs> and it was a foregone conclusion. So um, we need, we really need those teams to catch up and do something sooner rather than later because Vettel himself, he's he's won five or the and, six. and then second in one yeah. so you know unless he finishes no other races it's very difficult to catch him up yeah. so uh, well i suppose these fellas have money too much money perhaps so what are you going to read for us this morning <laughs> we're going to read about catching up <laughs> catching up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're going to read about catching up and that if you're not catching up if if you can't catch up with the Red Bull in your life, <laughs> don't lose heart. <laughs> you know? Don't <laughs> lose heart. We're not talking about the Red Bull to drink this morning. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, if, if you're driving the, ra the race of life mm. and you find that you're not taking the corners too well and you keep going off the track mm -hmm. and having collisions, you know, then there's, there's some hope in Pastor. Yes. And, and um, this wonderful book, you know, I was reading on the weekend mm -hmm. a little book that the youth in the church gave to me as a, as a token of appreciation for something I did. And um, it led me and one chapter on faith. And I went into Hebrews because that's the faith book in, in, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I felt so overjoyed when I read Hebrews 11, 39 and 40 and went on to read 12. But 39 and 40 will, will, will lead us in quite nicely that I felt that we should really should. share this, that fantastic feeling that I got of, of encouragement, you know, mm -hmm. from, from something that you read and you really think nothing in it, but when you really study it, it is so encouraging. And of course, with what's going on now um, in, in the world, and especially what's going on in our country, where it's getting tighter by the second, not by the day, but by the second, that um, this will help us. So it's Hebrews. Uh, 11 verses 39 and 40 and I would encourage everyone to read Hebrews 11 and also read 12 to set it into context and, and see the follow up from what we what precedes it and what follows it and it's about the about faith and about the people like Abraham and Moses and Gideon and Noah and Barak and Samson and 
David and Sam, all the people who went before, who showed immense faith and what happened to them despite their faith. Verse 39, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. You want to read it again? It's pretty short. These, <coughs> these talking about these people mm -hmm. I just mentioned, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so they so that only together with us would they be made perfect. For they have all received a good testimony, beauty of living, Samson, Abraham, Jacob. They lived their lives, David, um, despite their failures, despite the ups and the downs, despite the mistakes that they have made in their lives. They have lived their lives believing, looking forward to a promise. But they didn't receive the promise, which is Jesus Christ coming in the Old Testament. The promise came in our time. But we are the one who receiving that promise. He came, he died on the cross. And because of that, out of this, he says here, the testimony through faith did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. What that is better? What better for us? provided no longer the slaughter of bull and lamb on our altar, but he provided Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary once and for all, for all our sins. So, out of that reality, we should be hopeful, strengthened, empowered, that we now have an advocate who we can go to. And the question of many persons um, in a time of so much struggles, so much disappointment, so much heartache and pain, we sometimes ask the question, why me? Why am I going through this? Why do I have a job? Why have I lost my home? Why is it that people, I'm trying to live my Christian, but people seem to be after me. Um, I'm working in, in, in a place as a believer, but I seem to be one being picked at and being shoved why me? But why not? Ask the question, why not me? Why am I not facing difficulties as other people are facing? Because remember, Abraham had his own struggles. Huh? When, Jesus, when God told him to take his son, only son after all these years, close to 100 years, and go up and, 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 and sacrifice him. Abraham didn't ask a question. He took his son. And then when he was going to sacrifice his son, his son asked him, asked, he asked him, Dad, but we have the wood and everything else, but where is the lamb? He said, the God will provide. That is faith. <laughs> that is real faith. How many parents would be willing, especially if you're the only child, willing to give such to God? And when he about to, to, to slaughter his son, God says, no, look over there. There is a pot in the bush. Yeah, but the point is that that is an example of how strong his faith was, but yet he didn't receive the promise. Yet, the comfort that they were promised, the reward didn't come, right? So if we now can take look at that as an example and say, listen, if people of such great faith and belief didn't get the nice life, we now don't, should not despair if we are not getting the nice life, okay? But what we have to do is to persevere, as it says in 12, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him enjoyed the cross, scorning its shame, and sat on the right hand of the Father. Consider him who enjoyed such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. If Jesus went through such trials and tribulations because he was of the promise that he had, we also shouldn't really concern ourselves and be bothered and discouraged by the trials and tribulations that we are going through because we also have the promise. So be encouraged, that's what I'm saying. Be really encouraged by the fact that you have a promise because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, no matter what you have, because we want to have, we have, that's how we are, we want to have things. So at the end of the day, whether you have or you have not, you're going with nothing, <laughs> right? You're going with nothing. So bear that in mind. So having is not really the key. 
to life, there must be more to it. And what is more to it is having faith and living your life in a certain way so that the joy that is promised will be yours. Is that getting any easier these days? No, not getting easier because most people still after the material possession. Mm -hmm. And as Jimmy rightly said, you're going to leave it. I mean, think about all the people um, that, that rich people have committed suicide, but who have wealth, who have power, and then die and leave it. Even we who have the little that we have, sometimes we so after the wealth and power and luxury of the world that we forget that we're going to die and leave it. The relationships that we build here with people, with our family, with our friends, how we treat others here on earth where God has placed us, it is what would give us that um, it crown of glory. Because you see, the, the, is, is what the life after this life is where the life really is. You know? <laughs> this is a, as I but you were talking about, this is a transshipment point. The container is on the dock, <laughs> waiting yeah. to be transported to another place. It's full of goods, or maybe it's empty. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it is at a transshipment point. We are at a transshipment point. This earth here is not our home. We're just passing through. Heaven is my home. That's where I'm heading. Because it, it, it is that when, when you say, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The joy that was set, the joy that is set before Stanford. I would endure the tribulation of this world. I endure the, the gossip and the, the, the tearing apart and the things that people may do to me. What make me hold my faith is the hope that one day I'm, a, I'm, I'm just on a championship point. The final destination is where that container going with the goods in it, where people would actually have the goods in their hand and enjoy the luxury of the goods. It may not be parallel to what you've seen, but let's take back to the Balkans, Morocco, um, the Serb mm. general yes. Yes. for 16 years on the run. Prior to that, for about 7, 10 years, was yeah. the dominant figure. Mm -hmm. And it all ends up now you know, but in not prison. Yeah. So what was the point? So Rat Kumalad is, is, is after a dominant figure. Right. Uh, healed. You read yourself of 7,000 Muslim men and others. Mm. And um, at 69, you you're certainly going to be incarcerated till you're ready to exit. Exactly. And what, what does he gain from it? No, absolutely yeah. nothing. Right. So we still yeah. don't learn. No. He still don't learn. Yeah. And, and that's why it's important for us, I think, to do it right. Do treat people well. Do it correctly. The tendency for us is to do people wrong, and mm. somehow mm. we feel we get away with this. Mm. But we just catch up with us. So that you see, that's that's the that's the challenge I see always. You know, you you can always just think about um, uh, supposedly then great leaders. Um, let's just zero in on the Middle East. Mm, yes. um, Mubarak, um, um, uh, Ali, Hassan. In well, look at Mubarak. Or, all the wealthies amassed, they took it away. Well, that's the, point. That, that's the whole thing. So for 30 years, it seemed like you are invincible. And all of a sudden, everything comes crumbling, you know, incrementally. And then you know more. Mm -hmm. Because he was doing it for himself. But we don't see that. No. We don't see that. Well, we don't know because we don't find out about these things. But when, when well, it all falls apart... you think we really don't know? Well, you think we really don't well, know? I don't know. I didn't know what he was doing. I must I be honest. I think we know. I think, you know... Some of them are pretty obvious. Quite correct. I wasn't aware of his... Uh, quite correct. His, his situation. I mean, we were talking before we got on the air, the Japan thing with the government um, being, being funded by... Um, to support wheeling and then there's recently the envelope the envelope the, issues the, the envelope right. is and we have it now in fifa right mm -hmm. and uh, so i mean the people who went to that meeting mm -hmm. i mean they quite clearly they have the capacity intellectuals there were people of varying levels indeed. of society indeed so they can't be innocent i mean uh, you no, hand no, out so. forty thousand dollars us each um, um it's not innocent people then. no you're hoping that the lie does not Come on. That's right. And when it comes on, then you begin to realize, you know, others are seeing you. But if the lie didn't c come on, I mean, you would have gone. Yeah, but you wouldn't have benefited in the long run. Well, I think that's if we didn't catch up with you, no, we'll catch up with you at some point. Right, I think that's what you're reading is trying to you see, tell us here this yeah. morning. But, you know, in, in Hebrews uh, 6, 10, it says, God is not unjust. Do not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. 
we want each of you to show the same diligence at the very end in order to make your hope sure. You know, in other words, help other people, do what is right, mm -hmm. and then you'll make your hope sure. You might get the 40,000 in the envelope right now, but when, you, when you're clocking out, it will stay right here. <laughs> you know, okay, no. when you're clocking out. I mean, look at the head of FIFA. I don't know. I haven't commented on his his bona fides or his honesty, integrity. I really or money seeing what I, uh, you know, on, on the paper and the, the news. But 76 years old, you know, he's gonna clock out shortly. You know, and all the bits and pieces he has. Well, 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 what's gonna happen with it? Yeah, because people is wealth is power. It's about control. That that's the world actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. that is what it's about. It is it's ab it is about power. It's, it's accumulation. Uh, accumulation of wealth, but to be the lime the limelight, and for people, you look at what's happening in FIFA. It is the power play. Uh, um, for, for 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 they who do what they do, the reality of it is for years things have been happening. But sooner or later, somebody blow the whistle. The secretary, general yeah, secretary, general blow secretary. the whistle. And here, a number of things now begin to just come out just like that. Now, we too would face the same reality in our lives. You know? mm. One day we go stand before God and the whistle blow, go be the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. Well, boy, you know, it, it, here it is. But the covering of Jesus Christ is the one that would cover our sins before God. Because when that book opened, at the end of the day, and judgment day come, and we all stand before God, and he begin now, as he says, begin to look in that book in, in Revelation and read out those things we have done, the good and the bad. The power play comes in. <laughs> the book is open. Now you now have to know the life you live here going to tell them how you treat people, how you live with your neighbor, how you treat your workers, how you treat your wife, your husband, how you treat people, uh, your co-workers, you as an employer, how you treat your employees. It is important for us to understand that we all would have to give account, but it's encouraging. Let me ask you this. When I suppose we were younger, we all had a, Christian, a saint name or some name that is associated with the Bible. And the idea, I suppose, by parents was that you sort of model yes. uh, Job, you sort of model um, yeah. whoever that right. disciple may, mm. may be. We have gone past this thing. We now. know the biblical names are out. Yeah, the biblical names. Yes. Are out. So we really don't have a model. Yeah, that's uh, the point. At any at any stage again. Oh. Yeah, because I, I was named Philip. So they were saying Philip who was responsible for a couple of things. So you, you, you were told that in school, and you sort of had that picture in your mind. Yes. This <laughs> no longer exists. No. <laughs> so no. you you really um, mirror, I suppose, um, the Jack Warners and the people who perhaps seem to accumulate at a very quick rate. Yes. Yeah. But someone was talking about that on the BBC, it's a polling program that they, con with concern about the whole football issue and youngsters. And this person was a, a, a woman, great follower of, of football in England, obviously from, from the way she spoke. She had a lot of knowledge. She said, you know, what's really worrying is that the youngsters are in school, little kids, all want to be footballers because of the money that they see in it. And, and all the things that these people do, and then limelight, the celebrities, and so forth, all for the wrong reasons. And I find that a, a lot of this has got out of control, the, the whole industry. But the whole thing is seemingly out of control, because mm -hmm. interestingly, in your profession, there's this, um, with Ryan Giggs, there's a, there's a, oh, a, yes, a court injunction, and then, Ridiculous. Uh, then all uh, Twitter and whatever the others are, um, well, they can lock up 75,000 people. Yeah, but I so mean, Ryan Giggs is a fool. I so mean, you, you <laughs> have an affair with somebody and you, you don't want to wait to know, so you go get an injunction. That's ridiculous because you're famous. I think it's the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. You know? It's not, it's not libelous or mm. slanderous. It's it's a, it's you know, you have an affair with somebody, you say, oh, we found out that he's having an affair. So what? You know, you, you decide to do that. You had to pay the consequences, you know? It comes back to the same thing we see. It's you. It's yeah. you. It's mm -hmm. you. But when, when the books open. When, ah, when, when the books open. You see, I, I wonder, just a matter of note, I wonder when people get before God, right? And they said, but, you know, and you open the book and say, God, I get an injunction against that. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And appealing against <laughs> that. So, you know, it give me time to be sentenced so I can live my life still. The Bible speaks anything about you. You could take an injunction. No, but he might be picking a football team. He's saying, 
gigs out, <laughs> you know, Ray, <laughs> you know, or as the case may be, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I suppose um, the challenges of this world continues to mount. It continues to mount. I mean, there, there, there perhaps not many men of great feet. Um, because uh, I sometimes wonder how people fall for seemingly uh, things that are temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, you, yes, things are bad, but the point I'm making, uh, you can look over there and see how shadow that thinking is, and there's nothing substantial in it. And yet you find people, well, they say a promise to a fool is better than what? Because you, I suppose I can you know, it's, you just look and you certainly see that there's nothing going to be... Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Th 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 there is so much. It, it is like a man saying, "Way, um, it didn't have no works or gone teeth." You, you, you're trying to justify your action for what you have done, but it's wrong. Now you gotta. We have to accept the reality. What right would always be right, and wrong would all always be wrong. You cannot be doing something wrong and try to justify it. A lot of the times, that's what people do. They justify their actions. When they finish, they want to cover it. Like the man who said, you know, I take an injunction. They do not speak about it. But what you did wasn't correct. You know it's not correct. But you want to hide it. But you cannot hide. Sooner or later, it catches up with you. And, and therefore, we have to now act and behave responsibly in our lives because we'd have to give a comfort but the joy of living for God is living by the word because at the end that's the hope that's the joy hmm. that's the reality at the end the receiving that which you have lived for and, and you know there, there are two categories of people there are those who just do something wrong and there are those who pretend they're right but actually doing a lot of wrong maybe they don't realize it because we have a lot of uh, um, people in leadership positions who adopt the approach of I'm the boss mm -hmm. and um, you know these are the rules and this is what I say goes and um, that itself is not a good thing because we have to adopt the, 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 the attitude of, um, of service that means loving to serve and we, we need to do that in whatever position we're in um, and that is a major problem because that itself creates a lot of issues so while they may say I'm a good Christian person, but these are the rules and I'm boss, you must do what I say. That's wrong. You're not a good Christian because you're not serving. You know, the point I wanted to make a while ago, which was back in my head, and that's our final piece this morning. Uh, the man in Florida with the end of the world, um, who now says he miscalculated. <laughs> and that's what I'm asking. How do people, I mean, subject themselves to that kind of... Um, I don't know, it's a theory, it's a, a view, it's an opinion. But how do you um, subject yourself to a repeated mistake? You did it in some time in the 1994. Lives, right. You, you're back again and then you feel again and, and, and people see me. That's, that's the point I was trying to get across to you. Here is a gentleman and from your teachings, no one will know mm -hmm. when that day will come. It will be like a thief in the night. Right. But there's someone pontificating that it will kind of happen as soon as a day. I suppose thousands of people. Uh, anxiety. Uh, so, so that's what, what I'm trying to get across. How do you, uh, as a human being, can read who, who should be able to, you know, dissect whatever it is? I don't. Well, the thing is, they're not they're not doing what the people who follow that are not really reading and understanding their Bible. You've got to really understand it. It's not something you could just read and But I don't through. think I need to read the Bible to understand that part. Yeah. I think that is common sense. I mean, from since I'm going to, to, to the Catechism, Catholic, and um, you told it will come like a thief in the night. I mean, they read it. So uh, a man tells you tomorrow he's going to, you know, make me the Prime Minister, make me the President, make me the Minister of Finance. And each, I mean, it's like my good friend who writes in the Informer, he's going to open a shop out in everybody's house. I mean, how is that? He's going to pay you in the U.S. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, yeah. uh, if I see you fall for that, I would say, well, I know Jimmy as a creditable attorney. I mean, how does he fall for it? Like a pastor who does a very good job at Sunday. I mean, how, so that's the point I'm trying to get across. How do people at a young level and pastor's level, you know, Believe seduced that into that kind of, of well, I don't fun. know. You know, I was watching a, 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 a 
program on the history of the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, he said the Bible was used to justify the slave trade. It was used to justify freedom from slavery, the abolition of slavery. It was used to justify the war of independence in America. It was used to justify everything. So, you know, these are leaders using the very Bible to suit their particular ends, at, you know, at the time. So, you know, that speaks for itself. Yeah, I, I think, Greg, we also have to accept the reality that there are millions of people who have never read the Bible, even in mm. developed societies that have never read the Bible. And a man coming to say to them that the world would end, they do not know what this Bible says because they've never read mm. it. So they're taking for granted that this man has some truth in what he's going to say based on his calculation. So you bring anxiety to a lot of people. We in the small islands, most of us know about the Bible. Most of us have read the, the, the Bible. Mm. The problem that we're having, that we're not living according to the Word of God, that's where the problem lies. But, but look, look at all the fools. I mean, even people being fooled, these, these televangelists, and they have these huge arenas with thousands and thousands of people that have given up all this money because they think they could buy their way into heaven by the more you give and yeah. so forth, which is completely contrary to what's in here, right? It's not by, it's not yeah. by works. Right. You know? So, look at that. Look at the Jim Jones affair in Ghana. Well, that's what I, think kill, I mean, that was 20-something years yeah. ago, 30-something years yeah. ago. I mean, how do... Someone in 20, 2011 allow himself or herself. Yeah, well you get convincing. You get convincing people. Well, you know, but but then we we have to conclude the Bible did say so. In the well, last days, yeah. there will be false prophets. So, yeah. but this is something that we can't get away from. It happened. You and I have to guard ourselves against it by knowing what mm -hmm. is in it. That's only so we can guard ourselves. Gentlemen, always a pleasure Great. having you. All the best. Good to see you again. Yeah, I hope you. Well, I know you're back in Lewis Hamilton. Hope something but can happen that he does a little better. I have to keep back in him. He's, a, he's the best driver in Formula One. <laughs> I hope he settles down when he doesn't continue with his immature outburst that he really let me down in Monaco. And um, I think that was terrible behavior on his part. And he's got to pull up his socks and um, control himself but um, and, and concentrate on what he does best. Which is drive. Yeah. Well, we keep our fingers crossed that he hope somehow is able to overtake Sebastian Vettel. He's German, eh? Yes. Uh, Jensen is British, right, and Alonso is Spanish. Spanish. Right, right, good. I used to like the Brazilians, Fittipaldi and, yes, you know, yes. Lisa. What, what has happened to him? was, um, he, he was, was doing, he, he, no, he was doing all right. Um, um, Hamilton, give him a good bounce and knock him out the race. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Which was not very good. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll come back with more. And uh, I know the Heats fans are celebrating 92-84, Dallas Mavericks. And, um, well, I suppose we'll have a little chat of it sometime during the course of the morning. Let's take a break. We'll be back with much more in a moment. Sometimes the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church, and communities. Theme, Yahweh call it the man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. There'll be music, song, and dance by our young men. Registration fee, $50, and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in the Eucharistic Passover for Men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th from 9 a.m. Great, and it is now 23 minutes to 8. This is Spice Morning for June the 1st, the start of the hurricane season. And uh, again, we want to urge you to be on your guard and to do the things that are required of you. Clean drains, cut overhanging trees, and so forth that, that are close to your house and um, at least try to mitigate whatever challenges they may be. Um, 
the dance festival is going to be on from today. Uh, groups from USA, from Venezuela, and the French territories, Martinique, Guadeloupe, going to be here for it. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be three days of tremendous excitement. And hope that you get take some time off on Saturday. You can attend one of the activities that will be held at the Treat Center. Well, we were talking a bit of basketball a while ago. The first game in the best of seven played last night, and that was played in Miami. Miami winning that fixture by 92 points to 84. Dallas Mavericks, they were on the losing side. And as you can see, it was a packed arena last night, and um, um, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, two of the key players for Miami, certainly, I'm sure. We're going to see a contest between these two teams going all the way to the to game number seven. Um, in pre in pre season in the playoff in the um, what it was the events the games before the playoff the Dallas Mavericks did beat Miami twice, so um, we'll see if they can repeat that um, now that they reach the winner take all contest. Okay, so we're going to take a break again, and we're going to come back with. Uh, we were hoping to talk to Reds for but it's getting a little challenge there to reach Reds. He's going to be in Grenada sometime next week, and we were hoping to talk to him a bit about West Indies cricket this morning, as well as the FIFA fiasco involving several Caribbean countries, the impact uh, Jack Warner um, Kingdom not being present in FIFA will have at the Caribbean football, likely replacements, because certainly I can't see him being re-elected and uh, therefore you got to look for new candidates and it will be interesting to hear some of the candidates around. So let's take a break and we'll come back and talk a little more. Bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared, you're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice. Walk away. Let's all get involved. Talk to someone today about the way you feel. Call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. each and every Tuesday evening from 8 p.m. Join sports enthusiasts, those who play, organize, and follow the game as they discuss the issues that matter most in sports. Relive the action of sports and give your views. So let's make a beat. Sports Forum on GIS TV each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Great, and we are going to get a little conversation with Paul Roberts in a moment, but um, there's something we promised to show you since Monday. Um, a young lady who is aspiring to represent Grenada at the World, Ice, the World Skating Championship and uh, has made some progress, and we have a latest video of her performance, and certainly I've seen it, and uh, trust me, it's beautiful. So let's take a look at this young lady. Uh, who is aspiring, her father is Grenadian, and she's aspiring to be part of the, the Winter Olympics as well as the World Ice Skating Championship. Let's look at it. The next skaters are Leah Clarkson from New York, New York.
beautiful indeed and certainly one of the candidates for Grenada's representation at the Winter Olympics um, sometime, what is it, this year or next year, 2013. So uh, she's about 14 years old, so still have some way to go and I'm sure we'll do well. We wish her well. Well, we've been talking about the FIFA issue for quite a while and as we said to you, Grenada was represented, the Grenada delegation of Cheney, who's the president, Daniel, Victor Daniel, the general secretary, and Wayne Francis, who is the director. They were in Trinidad for that meeting. And clearly, it's a topical issue. Um, I have on the line former Vice President Paul Roberts on the line here. Paul, good morning, Paul. And I am assuming that um, it is an issue that will not be blown away in a hurry. That is the Mm -hmm. what it's called a scandal involving Caribbean territories. The BBC seems to have it as continuous lead story as well as, as, well as other television stations around the world. Um, yeah, yeah, Ray, sorry about that. I was, I was looking at the television and your mouth moving and there's uh, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Yes, right. thank you so much for um, uh, giving me a call and putting me on the program. Yes, um, Ray, it's not going to go, uh, go away <laughs> anytime soon. From the international standpoint, but I tend to always be amused because, you know, 20 years ago, you remember I was a member of the executive, and I saw the nature of the beast, and um, that was for my first resignation, and um, clearly it's the, it's, the nature, it's the nature of FIFA. Um, you know, um, like I asked guys, I'm um, they talking about corruption, corruption, and bringing it into the cabinet. So what do you think the FAP is all about? What we did was simply... What we did was, was, was simply, um, said Blatter, many, many years ago, say to us, listen, watch, you are guys in the Caribbean, you are a powerful entity. If you go vote for me, I will give you FAP for the rest of my office to life. And what do you think the $250,000 is all about? The other day, two months ago, we get out of the blues, $150,000 is called bonus money. <laughs> and that was so amusing. Out of the blues, well, that helped us a lot eh, because um, we were able to pay bills and everything else like that when I was on the executive at the time. And what do you think that was? It was the establishment saying to you, listen, I'm giving you $150,000 to do what you want, spend it how you want. This is my way of dealing with the election campaign against Bin Hammer, ha uh, Hammerman coming up. So, so I don't know, this, this, this so-called and alleged $40,000 it's just a continuation of what has been going on for 20 years. It is the nature of FIFA. You're surprised that someone in the meeting would have uh, recorded it, and because clearly without FIFA's assistance, uh, most of these countries will not have been able to um, office, yes. participate in many of the tournaments that they are able to participate in, and even now have Pete Secretariat. So uh, it, it, it is interesting that uh, participants in the meeting able to record it and gave it to Chuck Blazer, who is the secretary of CONCACAF, and he then turned it over to FIFA. Yeah, but there's the problem, you know, Ray. Um, it is an election year. This FIFA, I mean, and I look at it, you see the guys coming with their lead jets and, um, and their limousines and everything. It's like, that's a different league. Now, this is massive, massive money tossing up around there. This is, this is massive money, and we are just some junior players. So, fundamentally, what is happening is there's a fight. There's an obvious fight, because I'm trying to read the politics, too, between Chuck Blazer, right, who is, of course, um, um, second to Jack Warner, and obviously Chuck B. Blazer is very ambitious, wanting to get the FIFA um, um, presidency, because all of that is being talked about. All sorts of politics up there. And it is not just ordinary politics, it is money politics. So I am not surprised at what has happened. Um, it is just that, you know, um, it's, it's, it's sort of not going to filter down in a very serious way to us because we've been getting, uh, how everybody been calling it, um, we've been, they've been calling it um, corruption money or bribery money. This, this has been, this is what basically um, kept many of the small, smaller territories within the region, you know, about 20 um, FAs going. Um, because the Robin Hood, I like to call Jack Warner the Robin Hood <laughs> of the Caribbean. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have got no money. The Europeans would have gotten it. The Americans would have gotten it. The Australians, the Japanese, and everybody else would have been gotten it, gotten, getting something. But the Caribbean would get nothing. So it's a bittersweet kind of situation that's going on. Um, so, you know, Jack Warner, in the middle of this stuff, was able to 
you know, stand up and say, hey, the Caribbean needs something. Maybe um, a lot of people are saying they allegedly, they say allegedly that he took some for himself. But then it is a Robin Hood mentality that's been going on relative to the Caribbean. So you don't consider don't this corruption? People. You don't consider it to be corruption? Well, um, it is. You see, it's, it's, what is corruption, right? The whole establishment, um, if put it this way, Ray, I think 20 years ago, the, what we call corruption has been institutionalized by FIFA. <laughs> it's an institution. It's a monolith. So what do you do as a small territory? And this is why I said to Ram when we had the fight, Ram, we are bothering about FIFA for? You could be wasting your money. You're fighting a cause, and you do not you know, have the wherewithal. Let's study development of our football and develop our youths and our, and, and our football players and forget the system outside there because we cannot be part of it. You know, then fellas sneeze up there and we catch the cold down here. So, um, but Ram, of course, went ahead with it. But he did it genuinely, I must say, although we've been fighting against him, to take on Jack Warner and Seth Blatter and the lot. Now, that Ram, Ashley Ram folks was a very brave man and he see the results. Now, that it has come tumbling down, the system. I think because the system is so endemic, way down, going way down to the bottom, I don't know if... Very soon, we would see any changes per se. It might be cosmetic changes in FIFA, but I doubt whether, whether FIFA itself, because it is an institutional, which has an institution which has institutionalized the system of operations. And what do you do about that? That is why no governments are involved, because hell, something would happen there already. Well, let me put this to you. I really don't see Jack Warner surviving this one because clearly publicity alone will certainly not make him a worthy vice president. I mean, whether we like it or not, um, the Europeans will shun him, other countries will shun him. So he certainly won't be a vice president in FIFA, even though he may be well supported by CONCACAF. Mm -hmm. um, are there likely candidates that the region can put forward with the sort of influence and hopefully can be the Robin Hood, as you said, for Caribbean football? Well, there are one or two um, people who are on the bonus, and I don't know if at this point in time, because I've been watching the politics of the CONCACAF region for some time now, and I don't know if, well, um, you're a national organization, we might just do the individual a detriment, and it might be very detrimental to us in the Caribbean, because we have to use a Robin Hood mentality <laughs> to get anything for the Caribbean region. <laughs> the Caribbean. I don't know if you want me to mention it, but I'll, I'll say it if you, if you say go for it. I'll oh. call name. <laughs> no, tell me if you say so. Well, what is it? Well, one of the individuals who could possibly huh. um, emerge is um, the Jamaican. You mean um, Lieutenant you know, President? Brown? No, 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 the Jamaican president. That's... Um, um, What's his name again? Captain? Captain, Captain yeah. Right, right. But you think he has that kind of stature? Because Jack had a stature that um, it's not really, it, it's, it's a rare thing. I mean, here's a fellow who is able to, 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 to work his way through um, people who seemingly um, um, had more power than him, and he was able to outsmart them. I, mean, yeah, I don't know. I've not, I've not seen many people around Caribbean obvious, football obvious, with that yes, kind yeah. of slickness. But, but Captain Burrell is, is pretty good. Um, as you know, the Jamaican, uh, Jamaican um, FA is basically over-organized, so to speak. It's, it's one of the better organized FAs in the region. And uh, simply because of the strength of Captain um, Borea. And uh, he seems to be able to hold on to much of the respect within the region. Um, but the region, maybe Paul... could be a, a successor to Jack. But Paul, the region really don't have respect right now. I mean, you look at the news, you see that the region has a price. They're not very expensive. And you can basically pay them off to do whatever you want. So the region really don't have much respect in terms of, of um, the world football. I mean, yes, it's a Robin Hood, as you see, and you're glad for the money. But credibility-wise, the region really don't have respect. As you look at the news, I mean, I'm ashamed as a Caribbean person. Um, $40,000 seems to be the purchase in FIFA, whatever we have. Well, um, I, I take you what you say, but let's put it in perspective. Do the African nations have, have, have the kind of respect? I don't think so, too. I, 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 you I mean, understand what's going on there? That is correct. So All right. Even, look at the British. Look at the rigmarole and how much money has to pass. Even with the European Football Union, do they have? It, it, the problem is, is who gives them respect, I mean, based on the terms of reference that they put out? 
But we were not that bad when you look at it. What we've been doing, with, like I said, they, they sneeze and we catch the cold. <laughs> okay. So we've been okay. doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, uh, to me, as I said to people, um, we, may, we have to punish people who do wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, really and truly, I thought maybe the, how Jack monopolized the power Really, everything was centered around him, and it really looked like um, whatever shot he called, well, certainly had to be the shot that will be played. Um, to me, that is the unfortunate thing, because everybody see him as the decision maker, and clearly it's, I mean, if he, whatever he says, everybody jumps to it. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going through the throats here. It's, 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 it's a building process for the Caribbean in football, because cricket went through it. Remember Jeff Stallmeyer? Yes, J whatever he says happened in cricket, but that was a time when cricket built and we were proud and, and the West Indians in England were licking up England and stuff. So now you take your pick. What do you really want? <laughs> <laughs> the Jeff Paul Myers in cricket took us to a pride point that, n that is difficult to attain again. Look at what we have. We have beautiful organization. We have a board. We have everything. So maybe this is the Waterloo of in fact, football in the Caribbean, and maybe somebody and some grouping or some organization will emerge to really take away the kind of power, the unadulterated power Jack Warner had in the Caribbean. Well, let me ask you one final question now. So you, you use $40,000 for the um, purchase of equipment, and uh, it's good to hear GFE will have some equipment that he can record their activities, football and I suppose seminars and so forth. Um, there's this call now to return the money. Um, you are not in the meeting, but I understand it's forty thousand dollars. So we know where for twenty thousand go we, we are aware that twenty thousand used for equipment. There's still another twenty thousand out there and there's a call to return the money. Will the money be returned? And um, <laughs> Help me to appreciate what, where the other 20 is. But you see, the problem is, Ray, and I always made that point, that I don't know that the $20,000, which was given to me by the Grenada Football Association and the President and General Secretary, was part and parcel of that money. Now, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. I didn't know about the rigmarole. In fact, when I reached New York, buying the equipment, I heard all of this magic. I thought, at the time, it was the same system like the FAP funds, the bonus money, which came down out of the blues on us. And so we go about it in the very much the same way. You know, so I don't know that the money itself, which was received, supposedly, allegedly received, I don't know if any money was received. To be, I can't say that for a fact. Well, there's but a come on, Ray, we have our common sense. Well, there is a, there's a, there's a that picture that of it. But that doesn't make it so. So the monies which I was invested was invested for... Um, the development of football here, and I don't know if there is any remnants because don't forget, you say, Ray, we've been getting pittance all the time, you know. Yeah. How you know that the bigger territories didn't get the forty thousand dollars and we get twenty, or we get ten, or, or we get twenty? I don't know. Well, the only challenge is I, that I really don't know. The facts have to come out after the investigation. So I suppose they will come to Grenada. They'll go to St. Vincent, and but Paul, the only thing is, I I, I really believe the 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 respective associations who are in the meeting should should say something because you see you remain silent and it seems that it is consent that you know somebody received it because you're hearing things like it, it was an individual gift to the people who are at the meeting um i think the fa's need to say no or uh, say whether it was an individual gift for individuals who attended the meeting or whether it was a, a forty thousand for the football association but, uh, you know, you're hearing all sorts of things that one gentleman say he's not giving it back and it was a gift and you're hearing another source say it was money for the GFE and that's what's going on around the region. So I think um, the individual FEs need to say something about that money was either for the association or the people who attended, they got a gift of $40,000 to share among themselves. Yeah, well, that's a point. Um, but what I understand, Ray, and again, all of this is third party because when I came back from New York, I heard all these details. And because I was being, I've been probing, find, trying to find out what this thing is all about. What I understood is that Bin Harman came down um, to facilitate, and, and, and Jack Warner facilitated a meeting in Bobby in Trinidad so that he could canvas 
the members of CONCACAF. I understand third party again. It is an allegation, it is not factual, that all the CONCACAF region was invited. All of them, um, tickets were paid. The hotel, everything was paid. Now, if this is true, we must understand that who Bin Harman is. Well, he's, he's a multi-billionaire. He's a multi-trillionaire. He probably okay. came with his private jet. Okay. And what's $2 million to give away? The <laughs> to these little boys in the Caribbean, you know? So he came there, and I understand, again, it's an allegation that he had a meeting with these guys, and he said to them, listen, guys, watch. I would like you to vote for me. I will double the FIFA funds. You see what's going down? Right. I will double the FIFA funds. At the same time, when you all are leaving, I have a gift for you all. Now, the gift is for the presidents of all the CONCACAF region, right? It is not the Grenada Football Association, or it is not any particular association's money. It is for the usage of the presidents. But however, <laughs> that money is to be used for the development of a pet project, a FA pet project by the president of each of the territories. That is how I understood it. So the money was given to the individual, but it's not for the individual. It is for them to deal with a pet project which they wanted to get on with, but they don't have the money to deal with. That is what I understood. And, the, and like I said, the background to that is, and that's how I see it, and that's how I interpret it, again, allegations, is that we had just come from Barbados, from a management meeting, and, um, and, and that was a CONCACAF um, management meeting, uh, not sorry, a FIFA management meeting. You had four powerhouses meeting with, um, with, with the Grenada Football Association in Barbados, and one of the resolutions was that, we, that Grenada FA is very weak in promoting the football. So one of the resolutions which were taken, resolution number nine, said that, listen, with immediacy, a communication system with a marketing officer must be set up at the Grenada Football Association Secretariat. And so it's, that's the background to eventually speeding up to get the equipment. This was a resolution a management of a management meeting for development of football in Grenada. And so, so you, you see the link. Well, it will be what has happened. <laughs> it so will I be just put two and two together, and I figure out, well, A, it seems that there has been a windfall, like there was a windfall with the, with, with, with the $150,000. So the money was given to develop that plan. It is part of the action plans of the Barbados meeting. Well, Paul, uh, <laughs> glad that you are there to share some light on it, but it's an issue that will certainly not go away in a hurry. I know our president, Cheney, is in Zurich, as well as the general secretary, Daniel, is in Zurich for the FIFA Congress. And uh, we look forward to hearing, uh, the, well, certainly I hope it settles quickly and uh, Caribbean football make the progress that it really wants to make. So let me thank you for appearing this morning and <laughs> we'll be in touch, Paul. Yes, thanks again, Ray, and I was hoping that I was able to clear the air somewhat on this thorny <laughs> issue. Talk to you later. I don't know what's clear in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right. All right, so there's another side to it. It was a gift to the president, so he, the president can handle one of his pet projects. All right, I certainly hope one of these days I can maybe write a check that large. <laughs> Morning to you. Nice to have you, Candy Alin from Tam CC, and it's great seeing you again. How is first of all? The Kidney Foundation. Yes. I know that's not what we talk about. We're talking about <laughs> TAM CC Resource uh, Mobilization Office and projects. But uh, you lead this important group. How is it? They're doing, we are doing well. Um, you know, still trying to find ways of raising more right. money. Um, <laughs> people are getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the cost is still there. Yeah, that's um, correct. So and it's climbing. We, yes. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we we have a meeting this afternoon. In fact, uh, yeah. so every other week uh, we okay. come together and try to strategize and plan for um, fundraising activities. But people have been very generous. Yeah. Uh, recently, we got money that we don't know the source of. Right. Um, so once people know our bank account, uh, you know they make a contribution. Right. So we have to thank uh, all of the Grenadians here and overseas who have been helping us in that way.
Right. And then we have a presentation maybe tomorrow during the course of the week mm. from Ms. Benjamin told yeah. me she's going to, there's going to be a presentation she wants us to cover it sometime during the course of the week. Yeah. I mm -hmm. suppose she would relay the information to us after she speaks with you all. Yes. <laughs> Good. So we have our usual Wednesday morning TAM CC discussion. And we have from the college this morning, Mrs. Candia Allen and um, Resource Mobilization Office and Projects for TAM CC. Unfold it for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of years ago, the college decided to establish a office of resource mobilization. Um, what that is, is what it says, um, to try to mobilize uh, funding and um, in kind as well as in cash uh, for the different projects. Um, <clears throat> and projects meaning for the expansion of the college, it could be in terms of building, for example, you may notice one of our biggest ones is the need to um, to renovate the mechanical building. Right. Badly needed to renovate Badly needed, yes. Right. Um, and it's not an easy job. It was, uh, it was damaged by hurricane. Um, people have sometimes commented, well, we have a technical <coughs> college there, or techni students doing technical work, and the building is in that state, they could have to fix it. But this is a major job that requires uh, um, professionals to, to do the renovations. Um, as you know, buildings... Um, shake around and get right. insecure and you're not sure you it's not just a matter of putting up some more walls and right. you know so we have written a project proposal to try and get funding to to um, renovate that we're not we haven't been successful yet uh, we have even looked at uh, um, loan possibilities but of course the college depends on government mm -hmm. subvention every months every year um, and with that we pay staff we really don't have any additional funds to do development um, and so that that building there is quite a it's, a, it's pretty old and yes you know, it's pretty old you know considered <laughs> my agent was before me right so that is the immediate project that well, the that's a wants larger to get project. The large yes, project yes, yes. You would want to have funding for, that's I right. suppose, the European Union and other big institutions like that you're targeting. We are looking at that, yes. Um, and uh, also, the we we there are some institute some agencies who are not giving funding for infrastructure, and so that's that has been a difficult one. But but we are still continuing to see where we can get it. The other um, part of TAMCC that requires uh, um, support is the Agricultural Millbo, um College, the Agricultural College at Millbo. There's a lot of work that needs to be done there. But uh, we have recently been able to work with the Ministry of Agriculture um, for a project to train some of their um, community agricultural officers. Right. And some funding came from the Commonwealth Secretariat. Um, this was largely due to an initiative from the Ministry of Agriculture itself, but we helped them to work on the development of the project, um, the training. So that's going on. We've done, we are looking at CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency. They have committed. Um, Twenty million dollars to the region, CARICOM region, for developments in Tibet. So we will be working with uh, the NTA mm -hmm. and others in Grenada. NTA is National Training, National Training Agency, See, right. and others in Grenada and the region to come up with some projects um, in collaboration with Canadian colleges, which are similar, and universities. Mm -hmm. We've already had visits from some of them, um, the um, PEI and the Newfoundland, and, um, and we've had some discussions with the Association of Canadian Community Colleges in Canada um, to discuss some of the areas. So 
one big development that uh, we are looking at is is the uh, information technology use in the teaching and learning process. So we need to um, upgrade our equipment. We need to train our teachers. Um, we need to reorganize that whole approach to teaching so that uh, we introduce the use of um, ICT in ways that people are going to need to use it when they go out to work. Um, uh, and so th that's a big project that we are looking at. And, and that will be international funding you yes, can do. Yes, yes. And right. it's likely that we can work with the Canadians on that project because they have significant, um, they have made significant progress in that area. All of the institutions um, use ICT in their teaching, and they've been using it for years in the in the years of the video conferencing, okay. because they have large expanses of land and small populations in certain areas, with who they have to reach from the main cities, and so they've been working with uh, distance learning for a long time. So you do have some technical as well as financial support likely to come your way from the from CEDA. Yes. Right. Um, so we are looking forward to their further visits and further discussions. It, the problem is that uh, these uh, um, come as ideas and concepts at the beginning and then it takes about a year before it materializes in money. <laughs> <laughs> But at least uh, um, the, even the development of the program as a whole for the region has taken quite a long time. Um, so, But we know it's committed now. The government of Canada has recently changed. Uh, um, and uh, so I think that has caused a little delay in them coming and having further meetings. But they had indicated they would have further meetings in June. So we're looking forward to that. Our office, uh, in the absence of an office of resource mobilization, mm -hmm. a lot of opportunities might uh, be somewhere in the horizon, and the college may not have the resources to access these resources. And so what the office does is to um, research available funding um, for small projects, medium-sized, large projects, and uh, um, look at the development needs of the college and put the two things together. So I do a lot of project proposal writing um, and uh, a lot of communicating. We are also one big um, sustainable um, resource we are looking at is the establishment of an endowment fund. Okay, and that would uh, be an opportunity for, uh, well, I know you're looking for big money, but small money will small be accept money, <laughs> yes. acceptable. Yes, uh. um, the endowment fund will be is long term mm -hmm. because what endowment means is that the fund will be established and um, allow to grow for a number of years before anything anything is used out of it. Right. So we will only use the growth, the, right. the the what the fund makes in terms of interest. Um, interest. And so um, we are putting together the instruments and having discussions with potential financial institutions possibly the e ECCB, um, possibly the Scotia Bank, but because uh, that is not something that is done by most in agencies here, the banks don't have the facility to do, to establish such a fund here, but they would do it in one of the other branches in the region, like Barbados or one of the larger countries. Yeah, so the mobilization office is on is a, a beat and trying to get things in place. Yes, <laughs> very much. One so. man office? Yes, unfortunately, that is a limitation. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, yes, okay. definitely. And I, and I think um, the way the board probably sees it is if when we start bringing in 
well cash, mm -hmm. then they will s they will look at um, beefing up their office a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, the the um, School of Continuing Education has been able to raise funds for specific projects that they have done, and the college itself generally has been able to raise um, funds for small projects, but. Um, we need we need the big projects. We need to um, change the way we do things, and we need to um, increase. For example, one very good um, interesting project that um, we would really like to get funding for is a creative and performing arts project. Okay. We do fine arts and we do culture. We we teach culture. But we want to expand that. We want to have a music program. Um, we want to expand our fine arts program. Um, the, and um, and we and so the, we need the space and we need the equipment to do that. So we have developed a project proposal and we are looking for support for that. So. Well, I hope you get the building, the, the <laughs> mecha mechanical building, as a building without any top. People still work there? Yes. When the rain is not there? Even when the rain is there, there's yeah. some galvanized cover in the roof, and the poor um, students are sitting on chairs with their um, teacher and doing, the, especially the um, auto mechanics. Auto mechanics, yes. people. Yes. Yeah. So we, we really feel feel it for them and um, and I think uh, learning needs uh, comfortable space for it to be effective so I would hope that sooner rather than later some god fairy godmother or godfather <laughs> or one of these football people with a lot of oh. money will come your way well we don't want that kind of money <laughs> Well, this is a gift. We want clean money. <laughs> this is a multi-millionaire <laughs> giving a gift, I suppose. <laughs> well, I hope that um, somebody comes your way and um, do something. We we certainly need to up, up, up improve the facility we have there. Particularly, I agree with you. I suppose in small territories like Grenada, I suppose. It's never easy to get money from the treasury. Yes. Yes, with so but many things to do. We've been successful in getting small amounts from the private sector in Grenada. And that's right. one thing we need to recognize. Right. That, um, for example, recently, for a project that we developed for Caracu, mm -hmm. we got uh, some commitment from um, the electricity Good. company, Glenlec. Glenlec. Yes. Right. And so we we get small amounts also for small renovations mm -hmm. from different companies. Right. That has been helpful. Well, let me thank you for coming by this morning. And if you are those rich persons <laughs> and have clean money, <laughs> um, the mobilization office certainly would be grateful your contribution and the auto auto mechanics, mechanics. Sec mm -hmm. section. Which um, turns out a lot of students. Yes. Yeah, is where we, we get our qualified students, and um, certainly we would want to see it as as a premier building sooner than later. But at this time, there's little money. But I'm sure we're in good hands. Uh, you have vast experience. You you, mm -hmm. you should be able to tap some of these <laughs> people contacts okay. you have developed over the years. So Candy, Candy, let me thank you for coming and wish you well. I wish the college well. Is it start of the summer semester now? No, we are in the middle of the summer semester. Actually, summer semester. yes, we'll be having a graduation in July, July fifteenth. Oh, Thing so comes so quickly. Just well, mid July. Yeah, yes, it just does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It moves fast. <laughs> June the first. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back with um, some young people, I suppose. Well, let me see. Twenty-five years of the Green Street Pre-Primary School, a wonderful school. They're gonna be here with us in a moment. Talk about their activities to commemorate. 25 years. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church, and communities. Theme Yahweh Call It to Man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. They'll be music, song, and dance by our young men. Registration fee $50 and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in 
celebrate the Eucharistic Passover for men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th from 9 a.m. Uniquely rooted in our rich ancestral tradition. Feel, feel the energy at Twice Mass 2011, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 100,000 Jab Jab, the Caribbean's biggest summer festival and the safest carnival on earth. Twice Mass 2K11. It's all about Juve, traditional mass, and soca, the best street party in the world. Monday night mass, Twice Mass, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of one. 100,000 Jab Jabs! Log on now to www.spicemassgrenada.com for more info. Right, and um, we are back with you after a couple of infomercials. And as I promised, we're going to talk a little bit about 25 years of Green Street Pre-Primary School. We have the principal with us this morning. And uh, we want to extend our condolences to um, uh, Mrs. Um, Benjamin, our neighbor. Um, Mr. Benjamin died on Sunday, I was told. And uh, certainly um, we want to extend our deeper sympathy to the family. Uh, wonderful people. And uh, I'm sure that um, he will be missed. Uh, I remember him being a part of the trade union movement. Was the President, I think, or General Secretary, and also a teacher at GBS is also a permanent secretary. Uh, you remember him serving in the Ministry of Labor and other ministries, and uh, what I remember him most of all for in recent times, being a very active member of the the, the group of people who go to the Grand Island's Beach in the morning. He's, he'll be one of the 530 people, and thereafter he will have a swim, and he and his wife would leave. Again, we extend our deep sympathy to their son, Dave, and to Mrs. Benjamin and all the family. Well, we have with us now Carol, Carol James, and we were supposed to have Karen Worm, but Carol is here to do everything. Good morning to you, Carol. Good morning to you, Ray, and to the viewing public over there. Right, and she's the principal of the Green Street Primary School. You've been there for five years now, you tell me? Yes, Mr. Roberts. Twenty-five years. <laughs> you love it. Yes, I do. Yeah. I really love what I do. I believe you. I see you on Saturdays with the girls and the boys. Um, we told us a reading club. It has a reading club? Sunflower Reading Club. Sunflower Reading Club. Is it, uh, you were there from the very start, so you are one of the originals. Yes, one of the foundation teachers of that institution. Right. And I remember it was yourself, Miss uh, Alison Green. Miss Alison Green was the first teacher in charge, first principal. Uh -huh. We have also had Mrs. Susan Park, right. Mrs. Janice Patrick, mm -hmm. Mrs. Anne-Marie Lewis, and Miss Judy Thomas and myself. We started with six teachers. Right, so th that group started uh, the Green it's Street it's <laughs> Primary School. And you're the only one remaining now of the, of, of the six. No, teacher Janice is there still. Yeah, so, so two. Teacher Susan has since moved on to the Ministry, Ministry of, of Education, education right. as an education officer, and she is the education officer for our school. All right. Teacher Allison is back also. She's at the Belle Home. Teacher Anne Marie and Judy reside in the United States. Good. Right. So, um, so much to talk about. You would have seen um, three year olds. No, no uh, let me put it this way, three year olds into, into the pre-primary, mm -hmm. get into secondary, uh, I mean the primary school, then secondary, mm -hmm. and then they're in the world of work. work yes. So you have seen babies now become working people. people. Um, give us a sense of the 25 years, what are some of the challenges and the cherished moments for you and the school during that 25 year period? First of all, I think it's important to note what Green Street, how Green Street Pre Primary School came about. Right. It was through the efforts of the People's Revolutionary Government, they bought the Donald's building at Green Street. It was a residential. Yeah, I learned a bit there actually, uh -huh. but I didn't see it on my yes. <laughs> three months I stayed on. And right. the women's arm at that time 
were very instrumental in seeing education take its rightful place in this country. And we must applaud them for what they have done. I don't know if at the time they did envisage that Green Trippy Primary School will blossom into what it is today. Maybe so, or maybe not so. But we are proud to say that we have been here for 25 years, and we, have been, we are indeed very grateful for persons who saw the need to open that institution in the community of Green Street. How many students would have passed through that 25 years? You kept, you kept uh, the rules? It's rule? thousands. Thousands? Yes. When we started, the school's population was small mm -hmm. in terms of students. It really came, most of the students came from Teacher Gracie had a school in, on St. Jewel Street. Mm -hmm. And then it, the government took over, and when they opened Green Street, most of the students came from that institution, and then the others came from other communities around Green Street. The population was small, as I said. It could have been about 75 students there about. Right now, but what is your, what is your class the number? The population now is 167. That's, so that's it has grown. School there, 167? Yes, there are oh 10 God. classes, that's a lot, that's 10 I, teachers, and I said. over 50, 60 students. No. So that is to say what we have done so far for the nation mm -hmm. in terms of education. And we are indeed very happy to do so. And we must be grateful to God for giving us the strength, ideas, and just being there for us. Because without him, mm -hmm. we certainly wouldn't have had Green Street Primary School in existence now. We must be grateful to him and all the other contributors, our Ministry of Education, the government. Mm -hmm. We are a public pre-primary school. We are under the Ministry of Education, and there is an early childhood unit. And we must be grateful to the government for all that they are doing for us and also our parents, both the present parent population and past parents, also past pupils, through the government. You a strong parental support because yes. sometimes I look at your activities on television and it seems like, uh, well, I could understand because it's under, the children are under five years. Yes, some of them will take five years in the school. preschool before moving on to five and under. there are others who will take their five in the primary school. Good. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a two year program. Two year program. But you generally have had wonderful parental support. Yes, I must say. Without that parent body, we certainly wouldn't have been able to do and as I said, with all other contributors, the government of Grenada through the early childhood unit, with the education officers, that's where we we link with them and they are responsible for us. It's a government school. And also within the school's community, we must be thankful to, to persons, to people within the school's community or friends. We can always call on them at any time. That support within that Green Street community there, Karen Arch, et cetera, it's wonderful. Our parent body, present and past, so you will know, because we have been there for 25 years, that support and, oh, it's overwhelming. What sustains people like you to, I mean, babies could be, they're nice, they cry sometimes, they sometimes give, you know, they compound the day, actually, uh, with, with, I suppose, the demands. What sustains people like you to, for 25 years? <laughs> Every day you turn up, there's a baby crying, there are some happy, and you're trying to make everybody happy, and there are some, for whatever reason, happy today, and tomorrow they're not going to be happy for whatever reason. How do you sustain your sanity there? I think, first of all, is the love for what we do, and that sense of stability. Mm. Because for on the staff, or members of staff, I've been there for over 10 years. We have had, we were able to keep people persons at the Green Street Primary School, which is good. And I think anyone looking for an institution, that's one of the things that we like to send their child, their children to. One of the things you will look at is the stability. Having persons, their teachers, their that the faculty there over a number of years. Are you recruiting people 
uh, how, uh, I suppose that must be a challenge to recruit people who have that passion because sometimes people are looking for a job and the commoner face that is seemingly applicable to the job but the heart isn't there. So you, you seemingly have a good screening process. It's done by the ministry. Done by the ministry? Yes, uh, okay. Ministry of Education. They are the ones who will send persons to us. But that haven't been so for quite a while because, as I said, the yes, stability the is there. Right. And as I said, that's one of the things that keep us together. Right. And the uh, love for, uh, for what we do and the number of activities that we are involved in and that support from parents, well-wishers, of mm -hmm. the Green Trippy Primary School, we cannot do. And people them. like you must be congratulated because you, I at one time know that you were at Marshall College doing your bachelor's and seemingly upgrading yourself while having to carry the load of a school. Yes, and, and I've been, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do that. Right. And thankful to my family members for all the support, members of staff of the Green Trippy Primary School, too, for all the support and all the well wishers that I was able to make it through my daughter, husband, make it through the years that I took to do my first degree and I now have a first degree in educational BA in bachelor's in educational administration. And we must be thankful to, to the government of Grenada because through them we had training. There were a number of workshops that teachers were able to attend and we must also be thankful to also to the government and people of Cuba because at the time when Green Sweepy Primary School came into being, education, that level of education at Cuba, you know, it's, um, it's right up there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of support was given to us there through persons who were attached to the women's arm right. at the time and persons in early childhood unit. We can't remember person, can't forget persons like Mrs. Ruby Compton, right. who has since passed on, Mrs. Esther Fletcher, Mrs. Williams. These people were stalwarts within that early childhood department. And when I came into teaching, I did not know much, know anything about teaching in terms of teaching in a classroom. I must be thankful to my church, the Anglican Church. I was a Sunday school teacher at the time. That was the only experience with little children. And I had a lot of support from persons within the early childhood department, Mrs. Compton, etc., and also persons who I met at Green Street who were already teachers. They were already teaching. Teacher Janice, Teacher Allison, Teacher Susan, Teacher Anne Marie, and Teacher Judy. And I did learn a lot from them. I am very grateful. And I was able to build on what was given to me. And for this, I'm very grateful to everyone. Well, I want to wish you well. What are the activities you're going to have? There are going to be some public activity or two that public can... Well, for the week, the week started off with a church service. The week started Sunday. Sunday at the Methodist right, Church. The Methodist church. We had our open days yesterday open and Monday. Day yesterday. Today right. we are on your program. Great. Tomorrow, God's willing, we'll be a tan team with a fun day, a little sports activity so for the children. So you're going to have a tan team fun day? Yes. 175 and children, so you're going to see some parents. 67, yes. 67. Right. Both present and past parents right. will be there, and other well-wishers. And as a means of giving back to the general public, to our parents, present parent body, the children who are now there, and to the general public, we'll be on the Carnage Plaza with a health year. Okay, tomorrow and Friday, Friday and Friday between the school hours nine thirty to two thirty. Good. Well, I want to wish all. The, I want to congratulate you, all the teachers, and really admire the, the 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 environment that that school is kept in. I mean, it's pick and spank always. Uh, I, I'm sorry we couldn't show a little bit while you were yeah, talking okay. about the, the the Christmas programs you you had. Mm -hmm. We have we have a video of the official opening yeah, also of too. The school, of so September. Right. So we have a lot of uh, material. Unfortunately, we couldn't show a bit of it this morning. But Carol, I want to wish you well. I want to encourage those who have benefited from the school to be part of the week of activities. And as we heard from Carol, is it Thursday you're going to be a tanti? Tanti, little tanti. From Friday. What time? From 9.30 to 2.30, mm -hmm. also within the school hours. Right, with all within the school hours. So mm -hmm. find some time and do go give some solidarity to an institution that has served us well. And again, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. And so once again, thanks to, to everyone for 
all of you are doing for us at Green Street Primary School. Thank okay. you all. Okay, then. hold on a while, Carol. <laughs> okay, so let's take a quick break. I don't know if I'll be able to speak Spanish well, but we have a group of Venezuelans who are going to be with us. Yeah, I think there's a translator, but never don't, don't you worry. We'll certainly get along to, if not talking, dancing in the moment. They're here for the Grenada Dance Festival, which starts today. It is 23 minutes to 9. We'll be back shortly. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church, and communities. Theme, Yahweh call it to man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. There'll be music, song, and dance by our young men. Registration fee, $50, and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in the Eucharistic Passover for Men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th from 9 a.m. Did you know the Caribbean Court of Justice's role is to make sure that your rights under the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, are the same in whichever CARICOM country you go to? The revised Treaty of Chagaramas is the legal instrument that created the CSME. It was signed in 2001 by the CARICOM governments. The CCJ is the only court in the world that is allowed to interpret the treaty. This means that it clarifies it for all CARICOM countries and all CARICOM people. All of these things will ensure that our families, businesses, money and assets are handled the same anywhere in CARICOM without discrimination. That is what is called the CCJ's original jurisdiction. We need to talk. I see your wife with all she eyes black and blue and bruises all over her body. Is this the way you chose to show love? Look, if you look at your wife with love, violence would never come to your mind. And don't blame alcohol and stress. You chose to do it. Man, I used to see my father beat up my mother. Even though it used to hurt me, I used to like to see when they make up. Because I feel beating that was part of love. Man, how you could think so? Somebody ever hit you? Hit me? Yeah, but you're hitting your wife. I know she's feeling you now. I want to stop. I just don't know how. You really want to stop? Well, I'm going to tell you how. Call the Ministry of Social Development Domestic Violence Unit. Or you can call Legal Aid and Counseling. Somebody there is waiting to help you. The proceeding was a message from the Ministry of Social Development. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Good. So we have our friends with us this morning. Um, Alejandra, that's you. Yeah. Great smile. Good to see you. Hey. Um, from, from Venezuela. Uh, you're not from Venezuela, that's for sure. She's going to be there <laughs> to interpret for us. And uh, Ricardo, yeah. Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Good, good. And they all are here to participate in Grenada's Dance Festival. Yes. It's the um, bi biannual, the 11th biannual dance festival we're hosting from today until the next Saturday in right. the Trade Center. Right. And you remember her. She plays the violin. You play the, you yes, play the, violin. the violin. Beautiful play of the violin. Great. Great. <laughs> Have you seen her play? Yeah. Good. Right, so she's going to interpret for us because they're not that fluent in English. So, thus far, have they been enjoying Grenada? Hey, I'm, I'm disfrutado de Granada. Oh, bellísimo. Vaya, vaya, la playa es súper calurosa. It's beautiful. The, the beach is it's wonderful. Is it their first time in Grenada? It's their first time in Granada. Yes, it's their first time. First time in Granada. Right, and which part of Venezuela they come from? ¿De qué parte de Venezuela? Caracas. Caracas. Uh -huh. Mi familia es del centro de Guarico, familia llanera. His family is from the from the center of the country, from the co from the countryside. Okay. Yeah. What's right. what? Guarico. Uh, from Guarico. Guarico. Mm -hmm. All right, and you from Caracas. Yeah. Good. So, tell us about what we can expect from the Venezuelan dance company. ¿Qué esperamos del festival? ¿Qué qué qué podemos esperar de la compañía de Venezuela, Teresa Carreño? Bueno, una presentación de un ballet neoclásico y, y un vals venezolano, pero sobre todo mucho amor para dar en el escenario. 
They're going to be performing a neoclassical ballet and a vals, a Venezuelan vals, but more than that, a lot of love and passion from the, from the performance from Venezuela. South Americans have a great passion for dancing, yeah. and uh, I love to see them dance, actually. They will be performing on Friday on at Friday. 8 in the gala night and yes. Saturday in the youth exposition. Both days Both they will days. be performing. How many members, how many people in the team? Uh, just them two. They, just they came two. from Venezuela. Oh, they do it. Just these two? Yeah. Yes. All right. yes, yes. All right. On Friday they will be doing Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. Okay, Romeo and Juliet. That's a neoclassical, uh, right. yes. Uh, but it's a party day, mm -hmm. a party dogs. And um, on the Saturday they will do a, a vaults. It's called Herencia. It's like heritage. Okay. Yes. So that's going to be done to classical music? Yes. Yes. Prokofia yes. is the musical. Mm -hmm. From Romeo Prokofia? Romeo Juliet yes. is the balcony. Okay. The scent. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you are professional yeah. dancers? Both of you are professional dancers? Yeah. Professional. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm both also awesome yes. professional. Mm -hmm. Yes, they both are. And, and how long money. have you two been? Hace cuánto tiempo son? Empezamos a los nueve. Yo empecé a los nueve años en el ballet. She started at nine when she was nine years old. Nine years old. Yeah. At school, yes. And a los quince años. And he started when he was fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. And you've been doing it for quite a while now. Yeah, he started eh, bailando por un por mucho tiempo. Oh, sí, sí bastante. Around twenty-one years. You're like twenty-five years. Okay. Thirty-five. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. No, igual yo. ¿Cuánto sí. tiempo? Desde los 18 me gradué profesionalmente. Mm -hmm. she, she graduated, she graduated at 18. Uh, and so I have 26 now. Yeah, but she has been dancing right. for a while. Right, so you both have had international exposure dancing outside of Venezuela um, in a professional capacity. Eh, ¿Cuántas posiciones tenía internacionalmente bailando fuera de Venezuela? Y Bastante. como profesionales que algunos oh, países. Muchísimo, Escocia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have been to Japan. Scotland, to Japan, mm -hmm. um, South America. Yeah, oh, many countries in, in South America. Yeah, they usually, usually the company tours uh, around uh, South America. They go to Uruguay, uh, Argentina. You yeah. went once, yes. So Colombia. Col Colombia. Ecuador. Ecuador. So you have tremendous experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I certainly look forward to seeing the Romeo. Um, and Julia, they're and going Juliet. to do the balcony scene, you know, when Romeo goes and look for Juliet, and mm -hmm. she's in story. the balcony, very yeah. shy, right. and and then she just decides, okay, let's go down and talk to Romeo for a while, mm. and, yeah, al final, el primer beso and then and after that they have the first kiss in the end. <laughs> <of the scene. laughs> so this is going to be a wonderful piece that we can expect from the Venezuelans. una pieza. Eh, maravillosa que pueden esperar de sí. Venezuela, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Right. And um, let me ask you a little bit about yourself in terms of um, um, your your. Is it a group that is based in Caracas, or you are from another part of the country? And for this event, they have brought both of you. Es un grupo que está basado en Caracas o por yo sí, sí. o solo por esta oportunidad no. los han traído. Está el ballet Teresa Carreño que existe uh -huh. en la Fundación Teatro uh -huh. Teresa Carreño. Somos parte de la fundación uh -huh. y estamos ahí. ¿Hace cuántos años está fundada? Uh -huh. Muchísimo. Mucho. Mucho. Uh -huh. uh, they are part of a, a ballet a foundation, okay. so they the ballet from that uh, company. So they just two members from that ballet. They just they accustom dancing together. Okay. So they used to each other. So they, they, they like partners. Eh, so they dance and then just came for for the festival. So the company have been performing for around 30 years now. So it's a, if it, the company is based in Caracas. So even if he's from other places, he, he's in in Caracas. He goes and rehearses and everything in the. Yeah. In, in the company uh, area, in the theater, yeah. in the um, Teresa Carreño Theater. Right. That's where they base. Great. So we're in for a wonderful night. South American dancing. Always a lot of energy. Okay. I'm sure about that. There's going to be tremendous energy from both okay. of you. Thank 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 you. Thank
uh, for all the youth that are welcome to come and the pro professionals. It's open wow. for 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 people, people inclining to dance. Okay. I mean, we're going to have uh, they're going to do some exposition about the folkloric dance, okay. the Venezuelan folk folk, and after that they're going to be conducting like more classical. Uh, some a, a class for dancers specifically, mm -hmm. so that's gonna start at three thirty this afternoon. Yes, in the trade center. Trade center. Mm -hmm. right. Then tomorrow mm -hmm. at a, on Thursday we just have re general rehearsals, and Friday is the gala night at eight. Yeah, yeah. eight, eight on, on the dot. What's the entrance to go in? A uh, forty easy dollars. Forty easy dollars. Yes. Right. So that's Friday at the trade center. It starts at eight, and you're gonna see the best of Alejandro. Alejandra. Alejandra and uh, Ricardo. 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 Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing the Romeo. And Juliet. And That's Juliet. Friday. Juliet. Yes. Uh, I look forward to that. Yes. Okay. And Saturday still we have an ex performance. Saturday you have yes, a second. Yes, they're performing again. What time is that? It starts at 30. Okay. And that's going to be what price again? A, a $20 for adults, 10 for children. Okay. So you have two nights of pain. That's Friday night, 8 o'clock. Yes. And. Saturday, Saturday afternoon from one o'clock. From one o'clock, from Good. one thirty. Well, I look forward to seeing you. I look mm -hmm. forward to sharing you, and I look forward to be well entertained and to learn also from you. And I want to wish both of you, and also you, mm -hmm. good luck, and hope that you enjoy your stay in Grenada. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. Great. <laughs> so here is where we're going to extend an invitation to you again to be part of Grenada's. It's the 11th Dance Festival. Yes, no, the yes, the 11th. The 11th Dance Festival. There are participants from the United States here. We had them on the program yesterday. I think from Martinique. Martinique. Martinique today. today. And we have these two wonderful people from Venezuela. And they come from a company with more than 30 years of experience. And they are going to be entertaining us on Friday as well as Saturday at the Trade Center. Hoping that you can make some time and get there. We want to thank you for being part of this morning's presentation. We want to extend our invitation to you to join us tomorrow, Thursday, when we'll have another presentation. Until we meet again on behalf of the entire morning team, I'm Ray Robert saying goodbye, God bless, and good luck. watching the Government Information Service Channels 12 and 22.